a Rabbi Friedman is on a flight, New York to Houston. And he's talking about how he's waiting for his kosher meal to be served. And as he's waiting, you know, they serve him the kosher meal. There's a gazun tray for meals next to him, the guy sitting next to him. And he's getting ready to dig into a steak. And he, he excuses himself to go wash. When he comes back, he sees the man's name is on the gazun tray for meal, Weinstein. He's speaking to himself, should I say something to him? Should I not say something to him? But he works up the gumption. He says, I see your name is Weinstein. You Jewish? He says, yeah. He says, you know, you could order a kosher meal on a plane. I got to tell you what he answered. Because I don't want to blow it anyway. He says, kosher? No, I don't eat kosher. As a, fact, as a matter of fact, whatever God says to do, I do the opposite. Yeah. He says, I don't eat kosher. I don't eat because God said we shouldn't eat it. I just do the absolute opposite. Now, the man was a little hot in the airplane. Wasn't that, the air conditioning wasn't working that well. He rolls up his sleeves, and what does our rabbi friend see? Tattoos all over the arms. He goes, now there's a story here. What's going on? And he can detect a faint um, European accent when he's talking to him. He says, yeah, I'm sure you, uh, you have a story. He says, yeah, I'm going to tell you my story. He says, it was my son. It was a final straw for me. There we were in one of the camps. It was me, my wife, and my son. We had made it. And we, I had made, made up my mind. We're getting out of here no matter what as a threesome until the fateful day that they collected us in the middle of town. And he said to us, you're going to go march on a march. And when we got to a clearing, they gave us all shovels and they told us to start digging. So we started to dig, dig, there was a big hole. And suddenly the Nazis started shooting. People were collapsing in the holes. My son, who I had, been, I had gripped very hard, I lost him. I saw him fall in the hole with, with my wife. And that was the last straw for me, Rabbi. To me, that was the last straw. So there you have it. Brushing the tears away. God said, have children. I did. And they were taken away from me. So I do the exact opposite now. He says, keep kosher. I eat treif, Rabbi. He says, honor the Sabbath. I drive my car. Whatever he says, I do the opposite. What are you going to say to someone like that? So basically, it's quiet for the rest of the trip. But you know Hashem has a way of running the world. Four years later, the rabbi says, I decide to take my family to Eretz Yisrael for Yom Yom and on Rosh Hashanah, we had a beautiful, lofty, spiritual experience. We had time during that week. I took my family throughout the country, north, south, Kvarim, interesting holy sites. I thought it was Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, we came back to Geula. And as you know, it's a long, it's a long davening in the morning. So now we have a break. And I leave the shul to come down, to, to take a walk. There's some fresh air. I'm walking. It's deserted. Geula. And as I... Stumbled to me, Sharm. I see a sight that makes absolutely no sense. There's a guy sitting with his legs crossed, puffing a cigar. It's just not done. Not in the Kipper, and certainly not me, Sharm. What is going on here? As I approached him, I can't believe it. It's Mr. Weinstein from the airplane. And he looks at me, he goes, You don't look familiar. And he goes, Yeah, remember four years ago we were on a plane together? So he says to him, I know you don't, you don't believe in Hashem anymore, you don't, believe, you don't practice Judaism anymore, but do me a favor. Today's Yom Kippur. Let's walk with me to our shul and say, El Mali Rachimim, kill Mali Rachimim for your son. He deserves to have, and his Hashem should have an Aliyah. But he tells him, I haven't been to a shul in 55 years. I wouldn't know what to say. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. So they start walking through Meir Sharim. They're all going to the nearest shtibel. And the rabbi approaches the, the chazan and he tells him the following. I would like for you to help my friend over here. His son had died al Kiddush Hashem. The chazan nodded his head. said, okay, what's the name? So he tells him, Menachem Be'yicheskel Shraga. Kasriel Menachem Be'yicheskel Shraga. The chazan starts to turn white as a ghost and he collapses and he faints. And what happened? They bring him to with a little water on the, on, you know, on, on the forehead. He gets up and he looks at the old man and goes, Tati! It was his father. And now in absolute shock and he says, You're alive? 
I thought you were killed when the Nazis started shooting. He says, Ta, you don't understand. When they started shooting, mommy shielded me. She took the bullets. I was underneath her in that pile of human bodies. And that was the process to get this man to come back to be, to be true after 55 years. It's never, it's, there's always a chance.